And as we celebrate this care, um, it's a point of centering for us, of, of how we come back and each week come together in a way to remember friendship with God, friendship with others, and friendship with nature. And we need the centering moment because these relationships get out of balance, um, whether it's something we've done or something we've experienced. Because of the suffering that is present, whether it's explainable or not. And so we have space to come and to gather all of who we are and all that we have experienced and place that in God's care. Um, and as we do that placing together, there is then always a call to be a part of that caring work ourselves, to not be the ones that further tip the balance out of balance, but the ones who help bring it closer to balance. And I know these things can be hard to talk about when we think of nature. <laughs> what can one person make a difference in all of the trouble that is happening? Or when we talk about pain, how can I think of another suffering when I am in the worst night of my life right now? And there are times, there are times to fold in and to just let God be present with you in the midst of the tears and the midst of the storms. But uh, there's also that pesky thing of human nature that so easily gets stuck there. Um, and that doesn't try to do anything because we feel we can't do something worthwhile and then God doesn't have as much space God could have to work with us and instead has one more piece that God has to work in spite of. And there's this funny thing, too, that happens that's so paradoxical and that when we do leave what opening we can in the midst of the suffering that we've experienced to recognize the suffering of others, there's a healing and a strength and a spirit that comes in that gives us more power to handle our own, too. And that is what Paul is talking about here in this passage in Romans. Um, it's, a com it's a cry to not um, follow the way of death, to not adopt a spirit of fear that falls in and itself but one of hope and one of faith, one of adoption. And the funny thing is that um, si this is one point where science is absolutely um, undergirding what Paul has struck on in faith. And that there's a study, and I want to um, share his name, right, um, that has been done by Larry Sherwitz, um, and it's a study of coronary heart disease. And in his study, he found a correlation between the frequency of times that patients would use I, me, and mine, and the increased risk of heart attack, and increased risk of that heart attack being faithful, or fatal, faithful, <laughs> wrong F word, excuse me, um, and, and labeled this correlation in the frequency of people using I, me, and mine as um, self-involvement is what he called it. And that this self-involvement factor in the midst of this study and looking at the heart attacks was actually a better predictor of death than smoking, high cholesterol levels, or high blood pressure. That was a huge moment for me <laughs> in reading that. Um, and there's another study that's been done by Johanna Zimmerman um, that found a similar correlation, not with heart attacks, but with depression um, around the frequency of I, me, and mine. And so here we have Paul in this passage to Romans talking about if we live according to the flesh, we will die. And here is science showing the correlation of what happens when we live in fear and we live only looking to me and my and mine. And so it's a simple call this morning. It's a call to one of faith and one of a spirit of adoption and to let go of that fear and to step forward in hope. And I know how simple this is and I know how impossible um, this is 
Just think of the suffering that we have named and we have shared together this morning. And it is real suffering that rocks our boats and sends us storms that we can barely weather or manage. So I know the tall calling um, that this passage is. But I also, quite frankly, want us to live. Gail has another birthday. I want us to have more birthdays. And I don't mean that silly or flippantly. I want there to be life for Epworth and for our communities. And I want us to fully take on the significance and depth of what it means to live in a spirit of adoption and to let go of that which kills us and to let God rework a new orientation in us that steps outward, that acknowledges what is ours, but steps beyond that to see nature itself bound and decay and groaning for a liberation, that sees others who are limited and bound and praying with all of who they are for a new beginning and for a new way forward. So we do that journey together because in that journey is life and is hope, and the hope that someone cannot see in the midst of their storm, another will not be in that storm and will be able to see it and will be able to live it and make it real for the person still caught in the storm. That is the wider perspective that we are given in doing this journey together. That is what grounds us and roots us because there's going to be so much that happens in life. And much of it will be out of our control and out of our hands, but there will some be some that is within our power to change and to shift. And even if the suffering itself, we can't change and shift, we can change and shift our reaction and our perspective to it. And whether we give God more or less room to work in us, through us, and with us, or whether we force God to work in spite of us. There's an old Chinese story that talks about a farmer going through life and his neighbors being the peanut gallery counting on (laughs) and commenting on what's happening. And there's a time when his horse runs away and his neighbors are, oh, bad luck, bad luck, that's terrible for you. And the farmer says, you know, you just never can tell what is good or bad luck. We won't ever know. And then that horse comes back with wild stallion, and they're like, whoa, good luck. Oh, this is very good for you. And again, he's like, you just can't tell what will bring good luck and what will bring bad luck. And his son, um, training the wild stallion, falls and breaks his leg. And the comment is what? Bad luck. Oh, bad, bad, bad. Terrible, bad. Um, and again, the farmer's like, we don't know. And we're just going to deal with this and keep moving. And then later on, war comes in the story. And all young, able-bodied men are conscripted and sent um, to fight. But, of course, the farmer's son is not from his broken leg. So we don't know what God will be able to do or not do with all the mix of life that comes our way. But we do know that there is a God working to bring forth life at every stage when God knits us and when that knitting breaks apart as we're mourning with Carolyn's family. At whatever and every stage that we are in life, there is a God who is working to bring forth good, to bring forth hope, to bring forth life. And that is our good news. So may we live with that assurance in such a way that we do not fall back in fear, but we step forward the spirit of courage, knowing that we are the adopted sons and daughters of God, and knowing that there will be a day when life reigns in all of its abundance and in all of its completeness, not only for us, but for all creation. So our commitment is to have a Sabbath care moment. And it takes some time to step out of our own worlds. Um, And so however that looks like for you, if that looks like taking some time for creation and 
taking time to use real dishes and silverware and cups and wash them instead of just use disposable and keep on trucking. Um, whether that's people oriented and that one coworker that you do everything to work around and taking some time this week to work with or the neighbor that you step into the house real fast um, so that you don't have to listen um, to what's going on to spend some time um, outside doing some gardening that's going to get you caught in a longer conversation. Whatever it is, um, just one practice this week to create a little bit more of the space that God creates for us to care for us and to work with us and through us and in us. And as we do that, we do that only in the power of God. Um, we can't be nice to cranky neighbors on our own. And especially when they're not neighbors but bosses who have power over us. And so we come to this table to be filled with God's spirit of adoption. To know that we don't do this alone but that we are in this together.